So, right. the speaker. Well, I'm a bit of disadvantage, but I'm sure I'll be alright. Hello? Hold on, hold on. Am I holding it um, upside down? I'm putting it on speaker. Is it, it's on speaker. Can, can, can we do it so I can hear it? I need to make sure I can hear it. No. Testing, can I hear you speak, no. please? Yes. And, and I can hear it perfect. Okay. But right, you've right. got to hold that. Right, let me stop. right, I'm going to hold it. There, there, yes. Could you hold that? Sorry. Thank you. So, all right, I'm holding. You, 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 you. Who am I talking to? Sorry. <laughs> Pardon, if you're holding it there, let me move this all right. up a bit. So it's. It's a bit noisy. Over the phone. Yeah. Right. I, I didn't catch your name. Say again, sorry. Yeah, I said as long as you can hear me, it's fine. Yeah, I can hear you. Happy Easter, I hope you're well. Right, the last time you were at Speaker's Corner. Yeah. Silence on the phone. Yeah. 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 Praises the Black Madonna and Child, and within a week of that um, live stream, he opened the vaults in Russia and actually proved that he's a Christian very much like you. So what have you got to say? Right. So, the, for those of you listening in, the question is about Putin and about why I called out Putin after the Russian invasion of Ukraine. They need to ask. So here's the reason why Putin is an idolater why, and why Russian Orthodox Christians should kick Putin out okay, okay. because Putin worships the idea of Russia more than he worships Christ. He has sent Christian armies to kill Christians. He has sent and allowed Muslim armies to drive Christians from their home in Azerbaijan, Artsakh. He has refused to defend Christians in Armenia. He is sending Christians to die in wars against other Christians, and he is doing it not because he cares about the interests of Holy Mother Church, not because he cares about the interests of Christian populations, but because he cares about what he thinks is the Russian national interest. And nationalism is idolatry. Christianity teaches against nationalism. We as Christians are united in Christ. We're not separated by nationality. We are a temple of the living God. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. And so it is an anathema for a Christian to harm another Christian in war because you're desecrating the holy temple of the Holy Spirit. And so we cannot harm those who bear the image of God and have the spirit of God. That's what I'm saying about that. In that respect then, so what would you say to Tony Blair and um, the Bushes who claim to be born again Christians? What about them? And um, You can apply the same to them. You can apply the very same to them because they're the ones that are causing more for the wars in the world. So what about them? Okay. Why are you not putting them in the same category? Right, so he asks me, Yeah. he asks me, do I stick Tony Blair and President Bush in the same category as Putin. Okay, okay. Yes, I do. <laughs> of course I do. Yeah. Because right, right, right. Tony Blair yeah. and President Bush yeah. and Bill Clinton okay. all fought wars in favor of the national interest. Yeah. They bombed Christians. Yeah, they betrayed Christians. The Christians of Iraq were better threat under Saddam Hussein than they were threat after Saddam Hussein was toppled. And the Western liberal world destroyed Saddam Hussein as part of a grand strategy of toppling the Iranian regime. And they sacrificed Christians for that. And so, yes, Tony Blair is an idolater. Yes. President Bush is an idolater. Yeah. Yes, Bill Clinton is an idolater. And Christian politicians should use government for the benefit of the church, not for the benefit of the nation state. We should, as Louis IX did, sacrifice the, the nation 
for the kingdom, not sacrifice the kingdom for the nation. That's what I would say to that. Okay, so Putin apparently opened the vault and showed a historical icon. I've got no problem with that idea, I don't know the facts of the matter. However, that doesn't mean that Putin wasn't committing idolatry when he sent Orthodox Christians to kill Orthodox Christians. The reality is that Putin's religion and his application of the teachings of Christ are applied internally to Russia, but they're not being applied to its foreign policy. And until a Christian politician applies Christ's teachings to all aspects of society, then they are flawed in their application of the teachings of Christ. So there you go. Any other questions or are we done? The question is just a comment. From what you've said, I assume then that you are in support of Ukraine and um, not Russia. So the question is, do I support Ukraine, not Russia? Okay. The answer is yes. Not because I think that the Ukrainian government was good. Okay. Not because I support the Ukrainian government. Okay. but because the invasion of Russia into Ukraine is a direct result of Russia's internal policies. Russia failed to create a sphere of influence that anyone wanted to belong to because its economy failed, because it didn't build up a Christian confederacy of orthodox nations as an alternative to the EU, as an alternative to NATO. And it is using its military might to compensate for the failures of its own state and the corruption that plagues the Russian Federation. What he should have done is had more Christianity in Russia and applied it to himself and the other oligarchs that were pillaging the coffers of the Russian state and tackling corrupt uh, government officials that were taking bribes and actually worked to build a mother Russia that was strong and good for its citizens and that the countries bordering Russia would have wanted to align to. He didn't do that and now he's using his military to compensate for his failure. NATO broke their agreement with Russia. And if they didn't do that, they just provoked the man, as far as I see it, they provoked him. And if it was the other way around, and it was England that was being threatened, um, in um, breaking agreements with, with NATO, um, NATO breaking a break agreements with Britain, you wouldn't see it in the same way, I'm sure. Okay, so the question, the, the point raised is a valid one. Okay. NATO broke its agreement with Russia. That is absolutely true. But that does not justify Russia invading Ukraine because Ukraine didn't break its promise to Russia. It was NATO that broke its promise to Russia. So one evil act doesn't justify another evil act. And the evil act being perpetrated by Russia is greater than the evil act perpetrated by NATO. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, any questions? Thanks a lot. I've got your number now. I'll bring you back later. Thank you. You've got a question? Yeah. I'm a non denominational Christian. I'm ecumenical, so I don't believe in denominations. Any other questions? Steve, just regarding Crusaders. Yeah. How far is it just to justify the act of Crusader as a Christian? Because when I was reading uh, the article about the Crusader, I found out that they don't only destroy the Islamic jihadists, but they also destroy the Jewish temple and they kill a lot of Jewish people. So as a Christian, how fair it is to support that act? Right, it wasn't, what you've said isn't actually true. 
So the Jewish temple had already been destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. When the Muslims and the, the Christians had built a church, no, sorry, let me get this straight. I'm right. I'm not sure whether the Christians had already built a church on the temple. I don't think they did. I think they used it as a dump, a waste dump. It was a city dump ground. When the Muslims came, they built a mosque on the Temple Mount. When Christians liberated the, the, the region from Muslim occupation, they converted the mosque into a church. So Christians at no point destroyed the Jewish temple.